today about Syria. Uh, I think it's a very relevant uh, subject considering what's going on in the world and the misinformation about the situation in Syria and the role of Russia and the role of the United States vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Syria. I've, I've been to Syria so many times in my life in fact, just before the revolution that took place, the uprising, I was there for a, a synod meeting, and I was so amazed. I came back to Montreal, and I said, the infrastructure in Syria is better than it is in Montreal. The roads are paved. There's police on the uh, directing traffic. The restaurants are full. There's all kinds of humanitarian uh, work going on. Stuff with young people. I mean, it was like, oh my goodness, it was like a small paradise. I couldn't get over. And the Christians and Muslims, you couldn't tell a Christian from a Muslim or, or a Shiite or a Sunni. Everybody was, and everybody was happy. And there was a great deal of progress. I mean, people were b building multi-million dollar homes. And uh, you couldn't go to a restaurant that wasn't pat jam-packed with, with, with people. Um, every day was like an, adv an, adv an adventure. And what many people failed to know or to realize, or to understand, and I'm not trying to be political here, I'm trying to be look at this from a religious, humanitarian point of view. The president and his father before him, because they are a minority, they protected the Christians. They were great protectors of the Christian as a minority group unfortunately, a minority group in, in Syria. Uh, people say, well, they just use them. Well, minorities using minorities. We call it what you will. But they were protecting the, the Christian community. I mean, like the patriarchate, the heat and the light and all the utilities are paid for by the government. This particular president, Bashar, and his wife, often are going to Malula, they go to Saignaya, they go to the monasteries, the orphanages, and the convents. And it's not for show, I mean, he drives his own car. You see him, him and his wife driving, there's no great big limousine or, 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 or uh, a, a, a hundred rows of cars, armed guards. And you see him sitting down with the kids, giving them gifts, money, candy, whatever. And his wife was partic particularly interested in the, in the orphans. And I haven't seen any YouTube of Bashar going to a, a, a convent or, or, or a church that there wasn't a big smile on his face. And I remember when I was back in Syria a long time ago, one of his father's chief advisor, his name was Elias Yusuf, he, he was his top advisor. You cannot imagine the number of Christians that work in the government. 
Now people will, people will say he's a butcher. People will say that he killed his own people. They don't realize that the rebels used his people. They use his people and hide behind them. And when there's an attack, then Bashar is attacking his own people. Now the United Nations is saying that that recent uh, gas attack was done by the rebels and not by Bashar. Now what is the role of Russia? For hundreds of years, Russia has been a patron of Syria. Was it for political reasons? I don't know. I do know that if you go to any of the old convents like Saidnaya or Malula, you'll see the picture of Tsar Nicholas and Tsarina hanging in their salon because he, they patronized the holy places. They, during the Ottoman Empire, when the church was under an assault from so many different forces, do you know that the Russians opened up the schools? If you would talk to your great-grandparents, if you talk to parents that came from, from there years and years ago, they'll tell you that they still have their Bibles in Russian or Slavonic. They were taught, they were taught uh, very, very early uh, Russian. The 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 the, the uh, uh, Mikhail Naimi, the famous Lebanese poet, will tell you that he he was raised in a Russian school. The Russians built schools, they opened the churches, they helped with the appointment of bishops and priests and education, <coughs> bringing them to Russia. Saint Raphael Halloweeni was educated in Russia. The Russians have always viewed the Syrian as their, as their daughter church, or the mother church, I should say. In fact, the first bishop to Russia came from Syria. His name was Michael the Syrian. Russia has always felt a kinship, which is why today as it has been for over a century, we've had an embassy church in Moscow with a representative of the Antiochian Patriarchate. If Russia did not interfere in what's happening in Syria today, I dare say Syria would have truly imploded on a much deeper level than what it is. People don't realize how deeply embedded are the factions from, from all over the world in going to Syria and creating problems. You know, the bishops that were, that were kidnapped, they were kidnapped by Chechens that came through Turkey. Chechens pouring into Syria from Turkey. People coming from all over, joining ISIS and joining all these rebel and these other rebel groups to stir up and destroy this, this beautiful Syria, which was the center of civilization. Do you realize that Aleppo was where algebra was, was, was first invented? where our language, the alphabet, so many things were of civilization were born out of the great Syrian cities of Aleppo, Hama, Latakia, Damascus, the oldest continuous city in the world. We think that civilization is only that which is in the West. But civilization began in, in the Middle East. It came from that place called Syria. That, that, that the Western world and others have been trying to destroy.
at one point the Russian patriarch went to, went to Damascus to meet Patriarch John the Tenth, And I think he went to signal to him to tell him that not to worry, that the Russian government is behind, behind Damascus, is behind the government. This is not a political story, although it's been made into a political story. And the misinformation and fake news, I think it's unbelievable. Those poor people, you know how many refugees, how many orphans, how many orphans have, are today because of this war in Syria, which was brought in by outsiders. Yeah, there were a few Syrian rebels, but who fed them? Came from outside, armed them. And you know, our governments of the, of the Western governments have, have a wonderful fantasy of arming both sides so they all kill each other. It's, it's because of the Russian orthodoxy, because of the orthodox faith, that Russia has intervened to try to bring stability and peace to that very troubled part of the world. And the way that they are they are portrayed in the Western media is barbaric. I think it does a just a does a disservice to the people of that great country who are the fountain of civilization. We think that where do you think our technology evolved from? From the great masters of the Middle East and of Syria, our faith communities. They were first called Christians in Antioch, which was a part of Syria until the First World War, and they gave Antioch to Turkey. They play around with Syria like it's some kind of toy. And the reason that Russia has, is in there is trying to preserve the Christian community. Because if the Christian community leaves, Syria will dissolve in total barbarism. And I, for one, thank God that the Russians have intervened as they have been for over, well over, well, several hundred years. They've had their the relationship with the with the with the community in Syria, and they've kept the church alive, and let's pray they will continue to keep the church alive, and not have our Christian, our ancient Christian community, disappear from that land, who were in that land before anyone else. Pray for the people of 